Many of you know of or are currently using Jira for project management, but have you heard of Jira service management? Well, think about all the previous situations in your business like slow onboarding processes, terrible IT support, subpar customer service, or other bad service management activity. These sometimes complex services and processes can quickly be optimized with a service management software like Jira Service Management to deliver exceptional service experiences across the different operations operations in your business. Now, my focus in this Jira tutorial is to get you and your team familiar and up and running with Jira service management. I'll cover key benefits, use cases, important features, and I'll walk you through actually using Jira service management to take your service delivery to the next level. All right, so with that quick intro out the way, let's jump over to my computer and dive into Jira service management. Okay, to get started with Jira Service Management for free, simply head over to your browser and type in Atlassian.com. Then simply navigate up to Products and locate Jira Service Management. Now, before we launch into Jira Service Management, JSM, we need to quickly understand what IT service management is. Essentially, this term refers to the end-to-end -end management of IT services, including goals, support, planning, delivery, and other critical processes and actions. In short, IT service management is everything involved in providing exceptional IT services within a business. Now, if we break down Jira service management, this is an Atlassian service management solution that extends beyond just IT service management and encompasses all types of service management activities, including IT, HR, operations, customer service, and more. The result of implementing JSM in your business is all round service management for delivering exceptional service experiences to your employees and customers. Okay, so now that we understand what Jira service management is, let's go ahead and create a free account. Then quickly navigate down and set up your account. As I mentioned, this service is part of Atlassian's ecosystem and is a Jira based product, which means your service management activities connect seamlessly with your Jira projects. This is if you're using Jira for project management. You can also seamlessly integrate Confluence and other Atlassian products as well as third party products. Again, we'll dive into this shortly. Okay, so if you're new, go ahead and set up your account. It only takes a few clicks and then you'll be taken inside your Jira service management account. For me, I already have an account so I'll meet you inside. Here we are inside our free account. Now just quickly I want to say a big thank you to Atlassian for partnering with us on this channel and sponsoring this video. This is one of if not the best service management solutions that I've tested for small and medium sized businesses. So again a big thank you to Atlassian for sponsoring this video. And just quickly with a free account you get up to 3 agents and 10 users. Agents refer to licensed users who can work directly with your customers and employees. Your agents will handle requests and issues. On the other hand, internal users have limited access to portal actions. They can do simple things like submit requests, but they do not have the full management capabilities as an agent. Now, when you got started, you may have created a default project. What you can do is navigate over to the top left hand corner, then navigate down to get started, and that's going to take you here. Let's quickly understand our service management account. Here we can leverage a centralized customer portal. For example, let's check it out by clicking here. Again, this is a powerful help center portal that you can customize. This portal allows for self-service support for your customers and employees. Jira service management allows you to capture, store, update, and capture knowledge to enable self-service support and decrease deflection rates. This is using their powerful and dynamic portal. For example, as an internal employee, I could click here. Then I could find specific information that I'm after, or I could report broken hardware. For example, let's say that my company laptop stopped working. I've added a quick summary. Let's go ahead and describe the problem. Yesterday evening, my laptop overheated and stopped working. I can no longer turn on the laptop. I can also use these formatting options and then I can add other details down here. I could attach an image of the broken device and then add other information down here. The urgency is high. How big of an impact is the problem to our organization? I'm going to navigate down and click on minor localized and all of these help center options as well as fields you can customize. For this example, let's click on send and that's going to take the employee to this interface. Okay, let's head back to the service management dashboard. Hey guys, just quickly, did you know that over 90% of you that enjoy our free educational content have not yet subscribed? It would mean a lot to me if you drop a comment or hit subscribe if you love what I'm creating. This helps us grow the channel and motivates me to create bigger and more impactful tutorials for you to consume for free. Okay, so with that happy note, thank you in advance, and let's get back to the video. 
and we'll talk more about this dynamic help center portal shortly. If we navigate down to CQ, this will display all the requests that you and your team need to respond to. And this is across your different projects. And then down here, we can manage all our conversations. Then if we navigate up to the top and click on create, here we can quickly create a new request. Choose the project that this request is assigned to. Here we have my recent projects. I can select the issue type. And again, we can customize these different issue types later. This could be a service request. Where did this service request come from? It came from a customer via email. And then we can quickly add other details down here. This is if we want to quickly add a manual request. Okay, so I've added some additional information. I'm going to click on create. Now let's navigate over to the left hand sidebar and create a new project. And remember, Jira Service Management is not just for IT service management. We can use Jira Service Management for end-to-end -end service management across all these different departments or project types. Do we want to better improve our service management for human resources internally or optimize our design workflows when it comes to team collaboration? Depending on the nature of your organization, you can use Jira Service Management to deliver exceptional services across all these different areas. For the purpose of today's tutorial, let's navigate down to IT. This is the most common use case for JSM. This is IT service management. Today, let's take a look at IT service management, this basic project template here. As you become more experienced and familiar with JSM, you can shift over to a more complex IT service management solution template over here. However, with this basic template, we can handle prioritize service requests, communicate with customers and solve issues and incidents. Let's click here and click on use template. Name this project, Sheetify CRM customer service. So I'm gonna use this IT service management template for this business. The key prefix will automatically be added here. You can change it if you like. Select the team type for this project. I'm going to navigate down to information technology. And because this is a customer service project, I want the channel access to be open. If this project was just for my internal team and I only wanted my team to be able to submit requests, then I would select restricted. For this project, we want anyone to be able to submit requests. Then navigate down and click on create project. Here we can choose the request types for this particular project. I'm going to select fix an account problem. And here we can customize the request type details. A customer, like I showed you earlier, can access our help center portal and add their details to this request type. Here we can customize the name, the description. We can select the portal group as well as the issue type. I'm going to select incident. And on the right hand side, we can see a preview of the form that our customers will see when submitting a request. I'm happy with this. Let's navigate down and click on add. Here we have our current request types for this specific project. To remove any of these request types, simply click on remove and you can find and add another from the left hand side. For example, customer service. I want to add returns and exchanges. All I would do is customize this request type and then click on add. I also want to navigate over to customer service again and click on suggest a new feature. If you're doing this now, take the time to customize and review the request type. I'm going to click add then to preview a request type, click here, and you can view the form on the right. We can customize these later if we like. Let's continue to project. Then straight away, we can edit the request types if we like. I'm going to close out of this. Then to customize those request types that we just set up from this interface, simply navigate over to your project that you just created, then navigate down to project settings. This is where we can customize the project's details. Navigate over to request management, then request types, service requests. Then we can customize these service requests, navigate over to actions, and then click on edit. We can do the same with our incidents as well as unassigned. These are two request types that we just added. If we want to customize these further, simply navigate over to actions and again, click on edit. Okay, let's navigate back out of this. Under this project that we just created, Sheetify CRM customer service, let's go ahead and navigate through all these different features and tools that you have access to. If we click on channels, these are the channels that we can leverage to capture the different request types. For example, email, we could add this email to a support page on our website and a customer can send a request via this email and you can set up the request type and other important configurations here. Again, if I click down here, that's going to open up the portal. This is the portal I showed you earlier. Let's go ahead and open this up and navigate over to Help Center. So this is what our customers will see. Once they've added their email and verified their email, they have access to this Help Center. Now it's important to note that your different projects will be added down here. For example, this is the default project we started with and this is the IT customer service project that we just created. If the customer clicks here, these are the different portal groups. Let's click on this group here, common requests, and then these are the different request types. 
Now the customer will not be able to see these details here, only your agents have access to these options. However, your customers will navigate down here and locate the relevant request type. Now you can see that this group of request types are for customers. And so for me, I would actually remove these two different request types down here. The customer does not need to see report a system problem or report broken hardware. This request type is only for my internal teams. However, for example, let's say that the customer wants to request a new feature. They can then add their details down here and click on send. Okay, let's navigate back to our dashboard. And again, I just quickly showed you the portal. This is powerful for managing your different requests. You can also leverage a widget, which allows you to embed your portal directly on your website. This allows for a seamless interaction with your customers. They can engage with your portal and submit requests directly on your website. And you can also embed a chat on your website. Again, this just makes it super easy for your customers to submit requests. You can also leverage AI across JSM to help assess risk, avoid disruptions to services, and even use AI to suggest resolutions. Okay, so these are all the powerful channels that you can leverage across your different service management projects. Okay, let's navigate over to queues and view all queues and all open requests. And here we can manage all our requests. As you can see, these two requests came from our help center portal. I quickly added these as an example through our portal. Let's click on this issue here. And here we can see all the data surrounding this request. Sam Fisher raised this request via the portal. Here we can see the description. Can you please add an invoice generator to Sheetify CRM? Here we have the current status waiting for support. We can change the status here once it's been resolved or based on our resolution workflow. Here we can see some customer details, more fields and automations, which we haven't set up yet. I'm going to navigate down to reply to customer. As an agent, I want to reply to this customer with, we do not offer the invoice generator inside Sheetify CRM. You can find this feature inside our Sheetify bookkeeping toolkit. Learn more here. And I've added the link to our product page. You can also create canned responses to quickly respond to common questions you receive. I'm going to hit save. And this is the email the customer will receive. They can see the comment here, view the request, as well as turn off notifications. Let's head back to the request as an agent. I'm going to navigate up here and click on resolve this issue. And then I can add details about the resolution, as well as add internal notes and reply to the customer. I'm going to click on done and simply hit update. Next, we can navigate over to views. Here we have a board view, as well as a calendar view, a visual representation of our queues. Under views, we have service requests. Here we can manage all our service requests as well as our incidents. And then we can access reports. If we click on reports, here we can select and preview the report. For example, time resolution. Here we can see the time it takes to resolve issues. Let's navigate back over to reports. And then down here, you can search for the specific report that you're after. Let's navigate down to operations. Hey, just quickly, before we get back into this tutorial, if you're getting value from this video, please drop a like and subscribe. This means a lot to me and ultimately helps us reach and help more small business owners across YouTube. Thank you in advance. And with that quick note, let's jump back into this video. Now, this Jira service management feature is designed to help IT teams manage their daily activities related to infrastructure and application operation. And if you're interested in diving deeper into this feature, I'll add the appropriate information down below in the description. Next, let's navigate down to knowledge base. And here, what we can do is connect a Confluence space to create a knowledge base. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Confluence, I created a tutorial not too long ago, which I'll link up above and down below in the description that will help you get up and running with Confluence in minutes. Next, we have directory. Here we can manage all our customers as well as organizations. Now, just quickly, if we navigate up to recent, here we can see all our recent items that we've just worked on. We also have starred items, and then we have apps down here. To integrate apps, simply click on explore more apps, and here you can connect other third-party apps with your Atlassian account. In particular, you could be using a third-party app that helps you with your service management. You can find, locate, and add that app here. Now let's navigate back over to projects and click on our Sheetify CRM customer service project and then click on get started. And that's gonna take us back here. Now, if we navigate down the page to add your other team members, agents or users, click here. And here you can see your teams as well as people that are part of your Atlassian account. To add a person, navigate up to add people and add their email address in here or add from these third party locations. If I click on this individual here and I can manage that person's access across Atlassian products. Now with this specific customer service project here, I can click on add people and locate Emma. And here she is, choose a role. 
and I would choose out of these two different options, Service Desk Customers. This role here is for managing customers alone. If I select Service Desk Team, this individual can manage the entire team. I'm going to select Service Desk Customers and click on Add. And as you can see, Emma has been added to this project. However, that is a brief introduction on how you can get started with Jira Service Management. As you can see, JSM is a powerful service management solution that you can integrate across all your different services, departments, and operations, allowing you to leverage powerful tools and create seamless workflows to allow you and your team to execute goals, optimize support, streamline planning, smooth delivery of services and products, and more. Again, in short, Jira Service Management offers end-to-end -end services that allow you and your team to provide exceptional services across your organization. Now, is Jira Service Management right for you. Well, JSM is for your team if you're after a singular platform for unifying dev and ops teams, as well as if you're after a platform for collaboration, change management, resolving incidents and problems, providing exceptional services across your organization for your employees and teams, as well as if you're looking to empower your team to deliver those services. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to get started, simply click on the link in the description below this video to get started for free and to start using Jira Service Management in inside your business. And there we have it guys, that is it for this Jira service management tutorial. Now, if you have any questions about this service management solution, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.